Welcome to Virtual Pop Money Power Day 2020. My name is Kylie Delgado and thank you for joining us. I would like to encourage you I'd like to encourage you to register um, if you have not already done so. Um, uh, there are plenty of other workshops and there are several exhibitors that are excited and looking forward to meeting you. So please go ahead and register and take a look at some of the additional workshops that are available. Um, at this time, I would like us to learn a little bit about um, banking and the five secrets of banking in the digital age. Again, my name is Kylie Delgado and I'm the program manager for Bank on Maryland with the Cash Campaign of Maryland. So let's start off by talking about why we're here today. The reality is that crises are part of life. Everyone has to face them and it doesn't make any difference what the crisis is. Thanks to Jack Nicholas for that quote. Um, you've all experienced some sort of crisis in your lives and we're all going through the global pandemic right now. It's still important to manage our money and to bank even in this new normal. And so the point of this workshop is to help us talk about the benefits of banking in a crisis. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is that John F. Kennedy uh, let us know in his quote that the Chinese word for crisis is composed of two characters, one that represents danger and the other represents opportunity. And we would like to focus now not only on um, the dangers that we are all experiencing with the global pandemic, but how we can turn these difficult times into opportunities that we can take advantage of and help us um, get established. Did you know there are five barriers to short and long-term financial recovery for consumers during a crisis? Um, the first is navigating red tape or government systems. The second is overcoming limited access to credit. The third is identifying and avoiding scams. And the fourth is locating available resources. And last but not least is number five, which is modifying goals, budgets, and debts. History has taught us that these five barriers, whether the crisis be um, environmental, such as a tornado or a, um, a fire or some sort of natural disaster, whether it be a, a personal uh, difficulty, such as a health situation, um, managing a, a, a diagnosis of cancer or a heart attack, um, there are several different types of crises that we can all experience, but when we are going through them and um, when we are trying to get back to our new normal safely, we recognize that there are things that we have to overcome. There are challenges even within our financial lives that we need to address for our long-term growth and stability. There are certain skills though needed to learn how to handle these barriers, and that's what we're going to talk about a bit today helping give you some ideas and some suggestions for crossing those barriers um, so that you can make your road, um, your way on the road to greater financial stability. Our objective is clear. It's to help you learn how to manage each of these barriers. Um, the reality is tomorrow is too late in some instances and yesterday is already gone. So we have the here and the now to start to make changes and to take the steps needed. One of the things I'd like us to focus on is finding out more about check systems. While check systems itself is not inherently a government service, what we have learned is that a lot of people shy away from banking and using uh, checking and savings accounts because of their theories and information that they have that's limited about navigating check systems. So that's gonna be the thing we focus on with regard to barrier number one. When it comes to overcoming um, limited access to credit, many people don't realize that the beginning foundation of developing a healthy relationship with a financial institution can be something as easy as opening a bank account. Um, and we're going to tackle the fact that identifying and avoiding scams is something that your institutions are already doing 
and they have several protocols um, that you can learn from and use to help you navigate that third barrier. The fourth thing people struggle with, knowing where the available resources are, financial institutions can help you with this as well. Many institutions partner with several places and people in your communities, and it's important to also see how you can learn from them where to find reputable and reliable assistance when you need it. And last but not least, modifying our goals, our budgets, and our expectations, and our debts. That really harkens back to making sure that we are looking into options for um, continuing uh, financial education, for working with financial coaches, or seeking some budgeting types of assistance or referral from partners. So these are the five ways in which we are going to look at how we can overcome these barriers. The first one, as we said, navigating red tape, um, we're going to look at check systems. Five things to know. Um, check systems does track consumer banking behavior and banks do report to check system when consumers fail to pay fees, when um, consumers are not managing their accounts well, especially when those accounts are involved in fraudulent activity. It is really important to be aware that check systems information stays on your account for five years. This is important because if you have not been using the banking system for over five years because of fears um, resulting from something that happened and that was on check systems more than five years ago, this time during this global crisis might be a good opportunity to revisit attempting to open a banking account, whether that be checking or savings. If you have information in check systems that's more recent, say within the past five years, then it's also important to know what options are available to you. The first thing we would encourage is that the Fair Credit Reporting Act actually allows consumers to get a free copy of their check systems report every 12 months. You can visit checksystems.com and at this website, you will be asked a series of questions. You can scroll down through them and request your, um, your uh, check systems be report be provided to you online or by mail. So that is a wonderful and convenient way for you to get an idea of what it is the banks are seeing when they um, receive your request for uh, opening a new account. Uh, trying to get back to my screen. All right, and let's uh, learn some more uh, about uh, check systems and what um, some other advantages of it are for you. Where my PowerPoint went. Do 
you want me to keep going or start over? I'm confused. All right, so uh, visit check systems and download your report. Um, look for errors, um, bounce checks, uh, any um, opportunities or situations of identity theft or previously um, resolved accounts uh, that have not been reported accurately. Five more things to know if you've been denied because of check systems. Um, first of all, ask the bank why. Uh, make sure that the reasons they have denied with you are clear and understandable to you. You can dispute errors with check systems and they are required to investigate and correct any errors or remove inaccurate information within 30 days. Um, bad information in check systems is, does not mean that you cannot get a checking or savings account. But here it's really important to explain to the banker or the credit union staffer that you're working with what you will do differently. So perhaps you had a medical crisis that caused you to be unable to manage the account in the past, you lost your job, and so you were unable to make your payments on time and you ended up with some overdraft fees. You can explain that you are healthy again, that you have worked hard to get yourself reestablished and that you are ready, you believe, to use a, a checking and savings account well in order to move forward with your financial stability. If you are declined because of a bad check systems record, ask the bank or credit union about accounts that have fewer features or lower limits. Um, you will find that they may be more amenable once you recognize that there are several different products and sometimes different ways in which they can set up those products to be advantageous both for you and for them. And it's important that you find institutions with accounts that do not permit overdraft. Overdraft fees are the largest reason that people end up in check systems and have difficulty. So please, there are several accounts out there at Destinations Credit Union, Chase Bank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and BB&T to name a few. These institutions or institutions like them that have accounts that do not permit overdraft are a great way to open a bank account and reestablish yourselves in uh, building a relationship with the financial institutions. So why is building a relationship really important? Well, it can all help you overcome limited access to credit. Opening a bank account gives you the opportunity to begin building a good banking relationship. A good banking relationship is really about showing and demonstrating a history of good habits, putting account and funds into your account, removing funds from your account um, with no more than you already have in there. Um, and good banking relationships increase the opportunities for access to credit. Access to credit helps people manage temporary financial hardships better and when you're able to handle those short-term hardships even better, it makes the uh, chances of long-term harm much more reduced. So if you have not already opened a bank account, please consider doing so. Um, it is a really good way to start figuring out how you can reestablish your um, um, self towards a better future. If you are uh, employed now and you currently have a full part-time or seasonal job, and you are receiving government benefits, find a bank or credit union with an account that does not allow you to overdraft because that will allow you to avoid paying overdraft fees. Find a bank or credit union that has an account that requires $25 or less to open the account. And you're looking for one that costs you less than $5 a month to keep the account open. Um, whichever account you get, if it is a checking account or what we call a transaction or checklist checking, you would like to request a debit or check card so that you can make purchases and pay bills. Um, 
you are looking for an account that will not charge you additional fees when you're not able to use the account, and you would like an account that allows you to go into the branches or talk to someone on the phone or online when you have questions for free. There are several institutions with accounts like these that follow these rules, and I would like to highlight Chase Bank at this time because they do have an account, their Chase Secure Banking account that meets all of these requirements. But in addition, you can app open a Chase Secure Bank account entirely online. So as long as you have the right information, such as a state identification, your social security number, your name and an address, you are able to open this account and begin using it immediately. And one of the best parts about this is there are no minimum deposits to open the account. It's really important to make sure that you have at least the $5 each month for the monthly service fees. But this is a really good way for individuals who are unable to leave their homes at this time to be able to navigate and open a bank account entirely online. Um, Number three, identifying and avoiding scams. It's really important to um, learn what protocols a bank has um, in order to keep you safe. Banks are required by law to keep accounts safe and protected from wrongdoing. Banks have systems in place to protect your funds and your privacy um, so that they can follow the laws. Please keep the customer service number for the bank that you are working with in your smartphone or in an easily accessible place. This is important, especially if you are in an area that perhaps you do not have access to an internet, but you still have the opportunity to make phone calls. Then you simply pull up the phone number out of your contact section and you can have a conversation if there is anything of concern with regard to your account and its security. Please check your account statements for unusual activity on a regular basis, and that would mean at least once a month, preferably at least once a week. This means not just checking your bank balances, but checking the actual transactions that are taking place on the account. If you see a transaction for a charge at Target on September 10th for $15, Make sure you look at the calendar and walk through if you, how you recall being at Target and what those funds might have been used for. What can you do? It's really important to visit the bank website or contact customer service and ask for information. Um, it is, what can you do if you do suspect that you have had some difficulty? Well, visit your bank website or contact customer service and ask for help. Um, but know that many institutions also have lots of information online that can help you avoid scams. Um, one of those examples is Bank of America. Um, if you go to Bank of America, you will notice that one of the tabs on their homepage um, talks about privacy and security. It is really important um, to them and to many institutions that you identify and resolve frauds as quickly as possible. If you have concerns, again, you, ha you can um, reach out, send an email 
or you can contact them to report any concerns. So it's really important to spend some time getting to know your financial institutions and the options available to you. If someone uses your account without your knowledge, please report it to the bank or credit union as soon as possible. The bank is obligated to investigate and to refund any money taken from your account that was taken without your permission. Please do not also know that they cannot charge your account bank fees that happen because of fraud. Work with them, explore on the options for how you can deal with this type of situation should it occur. Um, if you do lose any type of government ID, such as a driver's license or state ID, please report it to the police when that does happen and keep a copy for your records. This is to just in case someone is able to use that information um, and open accounts um, um, illegally on your behalf, you will have the right documentation to show that you did report that there was an issue or a problem. The fourth thing we talk about is how to make sure we're locating available resources within our communities. Well, again, uh, banking in a digital age, the wonderful thing is many of your banks and credit unions are working with community organizations, whether it be because of Community Reinvestment Act or because of their mission on projects that have impact within the communities. Many nonprofits have good relationships with institutions. For example, the Boys and Girls Clubs across America um, have relationships with Truist Bank, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo, to name a few. And Susan G. Komen for The Cure, many of us know about their work to fight breast cancer. Bank of America is one of their trusted financial partners and supporters. So institutions can provide more than just funding. Many of their professionals are great mentors, internship supervisors, and have strong project management skills. Several of them will function as subject matter experts in a variety of financial service industry topics, and their staff also write articles and deliver presentations and champion change in support of various community groups. Sometimes even multiple institutions will work together if a goal is too large um, for any one institution, but would create a lot of impact and positives for the community in which they live. One such example of an institution that is involved in community outreach is Middletown Valley Bank. Middletown Valley Bank is a community bank located in the Frederick County and Washington County areas. If you go under their resources page and scroll down, you'll see they have a section about community and their community outreach efforts. Many financial institutions have a similar type of page or information that you can find about them and what's important to them. So at Middletown Valley Bank, they have had employees provide um, hundreds of hours of volunteering with many organizations. Um, they have supported Girls Inc. and a firehouse, and they have also provided support to Hagerstown YMCA and March for Babies, as well as the Myersville Library. So these might be good avenues and good opportunities to figure out what are the institutions that you are interested in, in banking with or you already bank with? How are they supporting the communities in which they, they operate? Um, because that might be a way in which you, you decide that you would like to be more involved and engaged with them. Consumers who need help with services beyond banking can learn about the work that organizations provide um, in the community and you can use those connections to get involved and find the resources that you might need. Um, and so number five, modifying goals, budgets, and debt. Many of you might be familiar with this um, particular barrier um, when you're dealing with a crisis and may be aware of some financial education resources that you've traditionally used in the past. Um, some folks have, are familiar with going to different financial education workshops or um, attending seminars, which during this time of COVID is a little bit harder to do in person. We want you to know that many financial institutions want you to succeed 
And the more stable um, a community is and community members are, the more deposits, loans, and profits that come to the institution. So you will find that many of our banks and credit unions have in-house financial services or have partnerships where they are able to refer their customers to safe resources for personal money management skills. Um, there are different ways that institutions choose to do this. Some um, use customizable technology, which is a nice benefit in this day and age um, when many of us cannot leave our homes um, because of COVID-19. Bank of America offers you Erica, which would be your own virtual financial assistant. Erica gives you personalized insights and weekly snapshots of your spending and gives you lots of information that is specifically customized to you and what you use your accounts to accomplish. Some institutions still um, have been known to offer financial education classes. Again, please visit their website or ask a branch employee how they're handling that process during COVID. Other institutions offer online curriculums that you can use entirely at your own comfort and at your own leisure. If you would like such an option, hands-on banking, um, which has special areas for military members, youth, entrepreneurs, and senior adults is available to you. Just Google hands-on banking. Um, and that is actually provided independently by Wells Fargo. Um, some institutions do go the extra mile and establish a referral process to connect members to free counseling and coaching services with skilled practitioners. At Destinations Credit Union, which is a small credit union in Parkville, Maryland in Baltimore County, they recognize that several of their members would like some additional one-on-one um, -on -one opportunities. And so they have partnered with Operation Hope to provide services at no cost so that individuals and customers and members who bank with them can get the benefit of talking with a financial um, counselor, financial coach on, an on coach on an ongoing basis, free of charge. Um, again, this is a wonderful opportunity uh, for all of us during this time to take a look and see what types of resources our institutions have available. And again, if you still do not have a bank account, this is a great way for you to start researching what are some of the things that you would like your bank to be doing or able to provide to you so that you can navigate the growth that you need to to get um, beyond the financial crisis. So to summarize, the world in which we live is changing. And the question is, are your finances changing with it? It's important to identify and manage the barriers in your financial life and look at how they might be impacting your overall health and well-being. The research tells us that most of us will go through three to five of the barriers um, during a, a crisis and as we work to navigate through the process. And keep in mind it is not indeed the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, at least according to Charles Darwin, but it is the one that is most adaptable to change. So here's your time to take one step. Take the first step. Decide which of these opportunities you would like to pursue, whether it's learning more about check systems and requesting your report, um, whether it's opening a bank account so that you can start to figure out how to build a good relationship with an institution. If perhaps it is that you are concerned about scams and hackers and all that, the, that comes with that and you need to spend some time looking at your institution's protocols and knowing how and when to contact customer service for help. Do you know where all the available resources are for you and for those in your community that depend on you? If not, look at the institutions that do work in your communities, in your neighborhoods, and get to know the places and the people that they are working with so that maybe those resources can be available to you when you need them most. And last but not least, it's really important to take some time and modify your goals and expectations as well as your budgets and debts as you navigate through this crisis. Financial education is available to you. There are financial coaching services, budgeting assistant, apps, online curriculums, referral partners, 
A wealth of information is out there that can help you be successful. So please keep in mind that tomorrow can be too late and yesterday is over. Now is exactly the right time to get started on taking one step towards your financial future. As we chat today, um, please feel free to ask your own questions um, or answer some of the ones below as we talk in, the, in our chat section. So what financial challenges have you experienced as a result of COVID? If you do not have a bank account, perhaps you'd be willing to explain why not and how do you pay your bills now? Um, if you've had a good experience with a financial institution, I'd love to hear about it. And what tips are you using to manage your funds during this pandemic? Thank you for your time today. I look forward to talking to you in the chat box.